So this is why my last series failed. We had a ton of wealth, but no tech, so we couldn't use any weapons. This series, we're gonna try to research as much tech as we can while keeping our wealth as low as possible. And a lot of the parameters are gonna be similar to the last series, which was based off of the Rim War mod that was released not that long ago. It's a really cool mod that revolutionizes how the map combat works. And one of the main parameters in the last run that made it quite interesting, I think, was the random research aspect, where the research that we do is completely random, but our research speed is multiplied by three times. In my last playthrough, there was a span of like 20 to 30 days where we did not get raided. So this time to add a bit more consistency, we're going to make it so we get raided every three days, but we also get a orbital trader every three days. The thing I like about orbital traders is they do not interfere. Like they won't help out with raids or anything. They just trade via comms. And this is actually the only way we're going to be able to trade. Every other faction on the map is going to be hostile. Before we get into how that whole thing is going to work, our storyteller for the start of the game is going to be Freya Fierce. With Freya, we eventually have to raid a nearby colony or our people will start to be upset. She also works fairly similar to Rani Random in a sense that she randomizes events, but the main thing is she limits tech to medieval, and I'm hoping that it's going to limit our random research to medieval tech so we don't end up researching like electricity before we're able to use a recurve bow, for example. Here's the difficulty we're going to play with. It's basically losing is fun, except for we're cranking the threat scale up to 500%. We're lowering scary a rot down to zero, so when we get manhunting animals, we can skin them all. The final modification is colonist instant kill down to zero, so colonists cannot die from a random headshot and if they do get shot in the head then we'll have time to bandage them up so here's our world map and this time around i'm not going to choose a random starting location as i feel like our parameters are already plenty difficult enough so we're going to start over here next to a couple of these mantidoian factions this is a new race mod that we're going to be playing with and it's a really unique one it's a bug race and i hope we can capture some of their people and i can kind of show that race off the reason why we're starting over here though mainly is because there's an alpine meadow I and mean, there's not that many of these on the map it's a high altitude with rich soil lots of flowers Summers are peaceful and beautiful, but stock up for harsh winters. I don't think we should have to stock up for harsh winters because the lowest temp it gets to is 31 degrees Fahrenheit, which is barely below freezing. 32 is freezing. Negative one Celsius for those of you guys who understand Celsius. The high it gets to is only 69 degrees. And we compare that with even this tile right next door is a lot lower altitude and it's quite a bit warmer. This grassland goes from 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 74. And that's quite a difference for it being just one tile over. It's also a mountainous tile and eventually we're going to want to build into the mountain. Mountains offer a really nice defense against what killed us in the last playthrough, which is random pod drops into the middle of your living room. All right, so here's all the colonists we have to choose from, and immediately you'll notice the interests are a little bit different. I've installed the interest mod, which expands upon interests a bit. And like, for example, if we had Magpie do crafting, he's actually really good at it. He learns it at 125% efficiency. Burning passion is 150, so he's just a bit below burning passion. But if he does it too much, he will develop allergies. I think that's actually really cool. There's also like bored, randomly falls asleep when using this skill too often, but he does learn it at 110%. But yeah, so the idea with our start is we're given eight random colonists and we have to choose one of them to make the best of it. I did forget to uninstall the prepared carefully mod, but I cannot alter their stats until we pass this window. So what you guys see on their stats is their unaltered stats. Like there's no way for me to have altered these with the prepared carefully mod. So basically you guys know that I'm not tinkering with their stats at all. This girl actually has a burning passion for intellectual with 10. She'd be a really good researcher. She's 71 though. This girl's old as well and she's frail. Yeah, we don't want that girl. This dude Squid could be a really good starter actually. He's got a decent amount of shooting in melee and he's a fast learner so he learns everything 75% quicker. So it's basically like he has minor passions for everything or I guess with the interest framework mod everything is learned at a 50% which I think in vanilla it's 35 so he's actually going to be even better than minor passion. He's also got some decent skill and some things that we actually really need like medical could be really good and he's a natural genius at medical slowly gains xp in this skill through innate gifts that's actually really good more likely to gain inspiration in the skill medical inspirations really aren't that good to give you like a higher success chance for your next surgery but yeah we don't really care too much about that with the difficulty we've chosen though there is a slightly higher chance for infections and diseases so it would be good to have some basic knowledge of medical crafting is five so he can make a short bow right away you need two crafting to make a short bow he does have three planting as well he's terrible at cooking but we don't necessarily need a cook at the start anyways. We can just eat food raw. There is a slightly higher chance for food poisoning. I forget what the starting parameter was. I'll just flash on the screen, but the base chance for eating raw food is like 2%. So it would increase it up to like, again, I don't know what the chance is, but max it's going to be like 2.3% or something. So it's really low chance we get food poisoning. I will say he's terrible at construction though. He is zero in construction. That could be a problem. He's probably going to botch a lot of stuff really early. I haven't even looked over a couple of these people, by the way, but like, I'm just going to assume they're not going to be as good. Lagu 
Dua is industrious, so she works quite a bit quicker. She can do social though, which I think that's a problem. We need to be able to do social to recruit other people. The only way we'd get recruits with this girl is through random events. So yeah, that's not happening. We also got like Scorpion who is overweight. That's a really bad trait, lowers his global work speed. And then we got Rat who apparently is addicted to feather dust. Rat is actually so solid and I would potentially go with Rat even, but she is completely incapable of doing any type of medical. If we got a disease or an infection early on, or if we got wounded even, she would die from just a minor scratch. So yeah, it looks like squid it is. And yeah, okay, as we can see over here, with one of our starting parameters, it made it so we're extremely at war with everyone. We're negative 100. There is a way to patch up relations through peace talks. I don't know if we can do quests for other factions, though, is the only thing. Does that mean we're at war with the Empire too? Yep, we're at war with the Empire. Okay, we can't do any Empire quests. I don't know if we're even going to get the starting Empire quest where you get the free psychic ability. I will say there is the deserter quest later on that makes it so you go to war with the Empire and like you get a free person. I wonder if we're going to get that one. But yeah, so here's our starting map. And originally I was thinking a base down here next to the water would be a really good idea. Although up here to the north, there is an anima tree. We're going to plop our starter base down to the north over here next to this anima tree. And since we're playing as a tribe, I have a mod that alters the lost tribe start so that we don't actually start with any tech at all. But since we are still playing as a tribe, we can meditate at this anima tree, create anima grass. Once we have 20 anima grass, we can perform a linking ritual, which is going to increase our silent powers. And this is repeatable. So this might be a good way to get psychic powers to the east of the anima tree we actually have some pretty nice ruins over here and we're gonna have squid start chopping down some trees so we can build into these ruins he's chopping down a kind of low grown pine tree for only 12 wood yeah we did not get much wood off of that he does have three planting too so he should be getting quite a wood from this 94 percent grown poplar tree we also want to do this as quick as possible because we need to make a bow asap and yeah 17 wood from that poplar that's barely not enough we need one more wood to make a bow so we're gonna go chop down this 99 percent grown pine tree that's gonna give us a lot of extra wood but we can use that to make a bed later the main thing is we want to make a bow asap because squid is naked and that's lowering his mood and apparently he's chilly which i'm surprised it's not lowering his mood more because we do have that negative 10 mood penalty as well from the difficulty i will say he's going to start getting a lot more negative penalties though because his comfort's going down it's going to go down to zero his hygiene and bladder are also going to go down we're gonna have to make a well so that he can wash himself and then also he has a chemical meter by the way i didn't go over this but we need to feed him drugs and if we don't which like we have no drugs right now his mood's going to go down even more so yeah we're going to start having some huge mood penalties we do not want to go into mental breakdown that could be deadly especially because like on day three we're going to get raided and by that time that's probably when he's going to start having all the mood penalties so we need to fix the naked modifier he's also going to have an eight raw food mood lit too and eight without table oh no thankfully i haven't installed the eating without table as a war crime mod i probably should because yeah i do agree the negative 25 mood lit for eating without a table is pretty realistic but we're not quite playing on realism difficulty yet we haven't gotten to that point. All right, we're about to make the bow. With his five crafting, there's a 14.6% chance it's good, 47% chance it's normal, 34 that it's poor. We're going to hope for normal or good. I mean, we're going to hope for good. Got to aim high here. And it's a... Whoa. I mean, there was a one in three chance, but come on, dude. I also had to reload, by the way, but I wanted to reload after we crafted the bow. So you guys didn't think I was save scumming and like I saved before finishing the bow and then just reverting until I got like a masterwork one, which would have taken me quite a while. We only have a 0.01% chance of masterwork. You can also tell I reloaded because I believe the chunk direction does change when I reload. But yeah, the reason why I reloaded is we're upping the difficulty even more on this playthrough. Thanks to the comment section for shouting out this mod, Yayo's Combat. We got to start making primitive ammo for the bow and primitive ammo 10 actually takes a lot of ingredients we're just going to make primitive ammo one for 13 wood that's going to make us 21 primitive ammo which i believe that's technically arrows that we can use for the bow oh and the bow actually already came with 28 already so we got a bow with a good amount of ammo on squid dude has eight shooting as well he should do pretty well with it now there are some boards to the west but they're in a pack and there's a really high chance they revenge and the whole pack will charge us we're going to go for this ebex doe which does have a three percent chance to manhunter so yeah it's obviously not that high and yeo's combat also does make the arrow projectile quicker um manhunter chance actually went down to 2.3 because we're further away from the doe that's why we don't want to get right up next to it because the closer you are to an animal the higher the manhunter chance we are also using run and gut on this playthrough so i could technically kite all those boars if they did manhunter although i'm nerfing it by quite a bit i'm nerfing the movement speed for using light weapons up to 30 percent and that's up from 10 so we're not going to be able to actually kite a herd of animals while shooting at them and very nice we ended up killing the doe 
pro tip is make sure we're hunting it and then if we prioritize hunting it then he will finish it off and he doesn't have to sit there and melee it like 30 times to finish it off so butchering up that doe is going to give us 30 leather which is not going to be enough for a tribal wear not even close which i guess is not the hugest of deals naked is only giving him negative six mood there are a few other things we should prioritize like maybe setting him up a bed would be nice with 25 wood and 35 leather we could set him up a bed we also need wood for making a stool there's actually a table really close by that we can use so we'll cut down this almost full-grown pine tree this should be a lot of wood actually 16 wood only for that okay and squid wants to consume the dough he was able to put it in his inventory by the way he just plopped it in his we're not gonna let him do that though we're gonna make him build a stool and we're really gonna hope he doesn't botch this there's a 25 percent chance he botches and if he does that he'll waste half the wood i think which would be really bad and very nice he did not botch we're now gonna have him butcher up the dough we're gonna lose quite a bit of resources from butchering this thing up at a butchering spot building a butcher table would be a greedier play because he's now hungry but it would be a better investment because we'd get more leather out of this one doe enough to make a bed out of and we'll get more leather from more animals we kill and you know what on second thought we're gonna try it we're gonna go for the greedy play here we're gonna chop down this almost fully grown pine tree it's 91 percent grown that should give us quite a bit of wood there's a few more over here too 16 wood for that i will say we need quite a bit of wood to make the butcher table though we need 95 wood and there is always a chance that it fails i don't like this fox being here by the way if it just randomly decided that it was hungry and attack squid that could be really bad another 15 wood from that pine tree it was also pretty fully grown this one's 84 percent it's a bit less grown that brings our total wood count up to 32 this is going to be rough he is about to be really hungry as well i don't think we're going to be able to pull this off i don't think we're going to have enough time he's got too many negative moodlets his recreation is also really low too yeah i think we're just going to butcher up the dough well we tried and let's see how much leather we get 16 only Ooh, that's rough we only get half the amount of leather because his cooking skill is so low and the difficulty also lowers our butchery efficiency i believe but yeah we're gonna have him eat the meats Oh, we almost ate it with bad hygiene, which increases food poison chance by 5%. Okay, yeah, we don't want that. Go wash first. And he's actually having to go really far to wash, but that is increasing his hygiene meter. And so now he doesn't have the negative moodlet for being grimy, I guess it was. So he's not gonna have a mental breakdown just yet. And we're also gonna get rid of this negative 12 in a second. We swapped it out for negative seven, eight raw food. He's also recreation unfulfilled. We can fix that. Well, I guess he's gonna do it himself. He's watching the sunset and there we go his mood's going up pretty good he is now in darkness though so i did a bit of testing on what would be the most optimal play for a squid at this point to keep him from having a mental breakdown first i think the best thing we can do right now is go over to this herd of gazelle and get in melee range of them and start shooting at them evidently these gazelle cannot manhunt her there's no manhunting chance and this has not always been the case by the way i've seen posts from like a year ago or a couple years ago where people were talking about herds of gazelle manhunting i guess there was some update where the gazelles do not manhunt her though and we can get in a melee range of them we actually missed that shot it was like a 45 percent chance wow we missed two in a row when they are laying down though if we're right next to them there's no chance of us missing which makes sense it would also make sense if we could just like aim a shot to their head because like that doesn't seem like it'd be something that's all that difficult to do although i guess we're not right next to them technically we are still a cell away and like if we got right on top of this gazelle we'd probably wake it up technically if you think about it and there we go we tagged it in the neck it's actually gonna bleed out in five hours that's a really good shot so good job to squid on that this gazelle is running towards us so we're gonna start tagging up oh, okay he's running away we'll just try to hit that shot yeah we missed it there's like a 28 percent chance of that hitting we're now gonna run down these gazelles and they don't run that far so we can just walk up to like this herd and they forgot that we just attacked one of their brethren that one's gonna run and that one's gonna okay we'll just oh that one's sleeping let's go up to this one and tag it hit in its leg it's gonna bleed out in 23 hours this one's actually not gonna bleed out we got to tag this one again in the face boom we shattered its front left hoof but it's not even bleeding out of that it did slow its movement though it's moving at 72 percent it's still really fast though one more shot should do it and there we go we hit it in the lung and it got another cut in its body it's gonna bleed out in nine hours but yeah this hurt over here is sleeping let's walk up to this one and then just boom hit in the body it's gonna bleed out in 24 hours what about this one? Oh, it's running pretty fast we did tag it though. For the first time on this playthrough, I think ever, Squid could now have a mental breakdown. His mood dips slightly below 35%. All right, well, we're gonna just keep hunting these gazelle. For some reason, oh, we're getting minor passion for work when we're hunting. And nice, we killed a gazelle finally. 
so yeah, his mood is actually not in mental break while he's shooting at these gazelle, and it's boosting him slightly above minor break, which is good. We're just going to plop a butcher spot right here and butcher this gazelle. The idea here is we want to keep his mood above minor break, and maybe the play here is to not butcher during the nighttime, because we do lose 20% global work speed for butchering at night. But yeah, we just finished that one, and okay, nice, he's resting. This is really good. We need to let his rest go above 25. After resting for, I think it was an hour, we're going to make him get up. And we're gonna let him rest again and what this does is it prevents us from having the sleeping outside moodlet debuff and the slept in the cold and there's one more i believe and you can let him sleep for like an hour at a time and as you can see he's no longer drowsy which is really good and his mood's gonna go above minor break so we're gonna have him just grab this leather he has 33 plane leather now we just need to kill one more gazelle i believe oh and there's actually two dead gazelle over here they bled out which is very nice let's actually give this one a nice plop in the head that one's gonna bleed out in nine hours. He wants to rest a little bit, that's fine. Anytime he wants to rest, like we'll let him rest. But after resting for only like, I wanna say 30 minutes, we're gonna make him butcher this gazelle. He need to be daytime now, so he's not in darkness anymore, which is good. He's now hungry though, so we're gonna have to fix that pretty soon. And in fact, that's what we're gonna fix next. We're gonna grab this leather and meat, and he wants to consume the gazelle meat. Nope, we're not gonna let you consume meat without a table. We're sending him back to our table area, and his mood is at 36, which is really good. I've seen colonists have mental breaks at 34% mood, so yeah and this fox is actually trying to eat this meat which is okay i guess i don't think we want to potentially have this fox manhunter there's only a three percent chance but then again it's not like we're really low on meat right now we just picked up 29 from that gazelle and there's a few more that are going to die soon so yeah we're going to eat some of this meat at the table we're really going to hope for no food poisoning here very nice and now he's going to wash himself so we're going to let him do that to get rid of the grimy moodlet and now his mood's actually in a really good spot he also wants to pee in the open too he's not going to like that negative three mood for peeing in the open he doesn't have a toilet yet which is fine we're about to fix one of his big negative moodlets, which is naked. And we only need 40 leather to do that. We can make a tribal kilt out of 40 leather. And so we don't need to make a tribal wear. This might also fix his chilly negative moodlet as well. Because it's not that cold. It's 56 degrees outside. He is drowsy now, so his mood is... Might... Is it going to dip? Yeah, it's at 34. Oh, and then he wants to sleep. That's fine. We'll let him sleep it off. We need a poor one, unfortunately. Wasn't there like a 30% chance of that happening? Yeah, that's unlucky, but oh well. After sleeping for like, I don't know, an hour, we're going to put on the tribal wear. And yeah, let's see. His mood's at 35. Can't have a mental breakdown anymore. 36. There we go. I will say, though, that was one of the bigger revelations I had where I found out that you don't need to actually make a bed on day one because you get a crazy amount of mood penalties for having them sleep outside and not having a bedroom. But even if you make a bedroom on day one, they still get mood penalties because you're probably not going to be able to make them a very good bedroom. But yeah, his mood's in a really good spot, and we're going to go out and kill some more of these gazelles because we need a bit of leather to make a bed because his comfort's in a really bad place right now. It's at 0%, and he's always got this uncomfortable moodlet. We do have enough leather to make a bed now, but there is a chance that he botches the bed, like a pretty good chance, so we're going to get more than we need. And there's actually a few gazelles that bled out. Like, there's this one. We hadn't picked that one up, and then there's this one, and then this one also bled out too. We had him pick up one of the gazelles, and then he's going to haul this one as well. And I decided not to butcher them yet because I don't know if we're going to need the leather to make the bed and that's all we really need the leather for right now like maybe if he botches twice in a row we'll need to butcher one of these up or something but for the most part we should be good here there was also eight plain leather on the ground over here that i forgot about let's try to chop down this pine tree and we had a bunch of wood left over from earlier this might be enough to be able to make him a bedroom that was only 16 wow that pine tree was fully grown but yeah we're gonna have him eat some food pray for no food poisoning and then he can rest a little bit. So let him watch the sunset because his recreation is about to dip below 35, I think it was. He's really getting bored of doing this type of recreation. But yeah, we just don't want his recreation to get too low because then he'll be recreation deprived. I think now we can start making the bedroom though. We got 72 wood, 37 plain leather. I was thinking about trying to make the bed first, but he's almost at one construction. If we get him to one, then it will lower his chance to botch by not that much. But I think the order of operations we want to do here is we want to build the flooring first. Well, I think the main thing actually is we want to finish the walls. We don't need his bed him to be completely floored in then again i'm probably not gonna let him sleep the whole night and there we go we got construction level one now we'll have him start working on this bed and we're really gonna hope he does not botch this we need to butcher another gazelle if that happened and we got a hostile force coming in in 0.6 days by the way so we're finally gonna get some action please just don't botch this though there's only a 20 percent chance he botches it i think he's got it Yes. Okay. Phew. That was huge. He made an awful bed. Oh, I think the bed construction is based off his construction skill. There was a 43% chance of it being awful, 43% chance of poor and 12% chance of normal. So again, we did get kind of unlucky there. There was a 56% chance of the outcome being better than the one we got, but that's all right. Now we'll let him rest and that's going to boost his comfort by quite a bit. For some reason, he's chilly, by the way, and this bed roll is supposed to prevent that. It says the variety of pelts and furs provide extra insulation during the frigid nights. The warmth of this bed counters hypothermia. It doesn't counter chili though apparently. 
yeah, we're not gonna let him sleep for too long at a time. This is kind of cheesy, I will say. And yeah, I guess there's really no reason to wall this room in completely, assuming we're not letting him sleep the whole night. I guess we'll save all that wood and we'll use it to make a butcher table. So we have 31 now and we're gonna need to chop down some trees, but like now we're at a point where we're not gonna have a mental breakdown under really any circumstances, I think. So we mowed down quite a few trees. We got 16, 16 wood, 17, 16, 16. That's definitely enough for a butcher table. I was looking at the map though and the scouting party is almost here. They have a scouting party size of 120, I believe it was. So what I'm thinking with this now, 111 wood we have is maybe we should use the wood for defenses. Please don't get food poisoning. If you got food poisoning there, by the way, that would have been so bad. I'm talking about like 2% chances. So it's like kind of pointless to talk about, I guess. But yeah, getting food poisoning right before we got raided probably would have been GG. So the idea here is we're going to put a spike trap. Oh, we can't build a spike trap. Our construction skill is too low. We need three construction in order to make a spike trap. Okay, that's not ideal. We're just going to wall off this base and we're going to turn this base into a mini bunker by making embrasures. These each cost 15 wood though. So we're really going to hope that neither of them botch. Nope, and here comes the raid. They are attacking immediately, by the way. And it's a Mantid. Dude's actually too smart, and he's a quick sleeper as well. Dude also has seven social. Like, we're really gonna hope we don't kill this guy. I just realized, by the way, we're out of ammo and we made both the embrasures. The dude's almost here though. That would have been really bad to run out of ammo. We're at seven out of 28 only. And that actually completely loaded us up. We're now at full ammo. So the idea here is Yogis down here is, okay, he's attacking our stool. We can't have that. He set it on fire. Oh no, and now he's coming for us. Oh, RIP that stool. I don't know what he did over there, by the way. He did something weird. But yeah, the door closed. We did claim the door, by the way. If you don't claim the door, then they can open the door. And we tagged him. He is still moving really fast, though, is the only thing. I ended up claiming this door down here after he ran through it. And he went down to attack that because he couldn't get to Squid anymore. Let's have Squid go inside. Hopefully, he can make it in before. Okay, nice. The door closed on this guy. This is an iron door. And so it's going to be kind of tanky. Nice. We hit him again. That's really good. The dude's not bleeding. His movement is lowered down to 86%, but his base movement is 5.1, which is really quick. Squid's base movement is only 4.6. So we're going to have to probably tag this guy a couple more times before we can outrun him. And there we go. He's backing off. He gave up on that door. All right, where is he going? He's going up here to attack from this side. Okay, that's fine. Go here to the embrasure. I'm gonna attack him through the embrasure. We tagged him again. His movement is still 83. We need to tag him like one more time, I think. There we go, his movement's 72. He's gonna bleed out in 12 hours. We're now gonna stop shooting him. But yeah, we're now gonna have Squid just kite this guy around. And we're also gonna try to grab this stool or this wood that's on the ground and this meat too, it's burning. We can actually just pick it up when it's burning, I think. Maybe not. I don't know, that table actually got destroyed. And yeah, the wood actually burned, which is unfortunate. Wood is very precious to us, but. Oh well. I should have picked up that stool before the guy raided us. I just wasn't really paying that much attention. So yeah, I think it is worth it to just kite this guy around. It's gonna take 11 hours though. The thing is, if we do attack him at this point, there's a pretty good chance that we knock him out and we kill him. So I don't think we wanna pump any more arrows into him. The main thing is we just need to keep Squid out of mental break. And in fact, we could do that by actually running back to the base. We could have him just go inside and take a little nap. And yeah, he's gonna take a little rest while Yogis is outside. I don't know how he's gonna rest, but maybe he's just sleeping with one eye open or something. Yoga's gonna knock this door. We don't wanna let him actually destroy the door because then he might try to set the bed on fire. Yeah, he did not get enough rest in. This is kind of bad. We're gonna have Squid just run outside. Like he's not below mental break right now, but he's getting there. Can you stop hitting the door down by the way? We might have to just tag him here just to make him stop hitting the door because we do not want him to go inside. Okay, phew, we did not kill him there and that did end up pissing him off. Holy crap, what were you doing there, Squid? He was just kind of chilling there for a moment. But yeah, Yogis is bleeding pretty bad. He's got moderate blood loss. I mean, he's moving really slow. We might be able to let Squid wash himself. That's definitely something that does not take much time. And that will remove his filthy moodlet. And actually, yeah, that was big. He's not gonna have a mental breakdown now. Yeah, so about the whole mood thing, Squid is tired now because he's been kiting this thing around forever. And I don't know what it's doing. Oh, okay, it finally went down. Yagus is gonna bleed out in four hours. We're gonna save him. And holy crap, he has 39 resist. That's gonna take forever to get through because Squid does only have one social. Well, he almost has two, but yeah. We're not even gonna tend him up. It's gonna be too much of a hassle right now because Squid's mood is so in the dumps. We're just gonna have Squid focus on getting his mood up. And right now, okay, he botches the stool, of course, 20% chance, and wastes around a tree of wood by doing that. But yeah, he made the second stool. We're gonna have him eat. And we kicked Yagis out of the bed. The dude's still on the bed, actually. Squid and Yagis are now sharing the bed. I don't know why there's no way to bring a prisoner outside, by the way. Like, we have no way to move him right now. At least not until he dies, which he's gonna die in one hour. It's unfortunate though we can't move him because Squid's gonna see that body. That's gonna upset him. And we're getting raided again. So this is not good. They're attacking immediately. 
immediately. We're gonna grab our stool, our precious stool, bring that thing inside, and then we're also gonna wall up these doors and we botch the, okay, very nice. We botched two walls in a row. And there we go, we finally finish it. And yeah, he's gonna observe corpse in a second here. There's nothing we can do about it though. Yep, there he goes, negative four mood for observing corpse. Here comes the raider though, you broy. And let's get a tag off. Nope, he's gonna set that on fire. We can't even hit him from over there, unfortunate. Oh, we put out the fire and he's going around. It's going for an embrasure, this is good. We're getting some free shots off. Another shot. Nice, we can actually hit him here. He's going for our door, which is annoying. The iron door is really tanky for a door. And if we hit him again, nice. I don't know where he was going, but after we hit him, he decided to turn around. We tagged him again, set that embrasure on fire, but we can put it out instantly. It's really good when he sets fires, especially in places where we can hit him, because it takes him a while to cast the fire. And we hit him again. We're gonna be out of arrows soon here, by the way. Oh, we hit him again too. We're gonna make some more arrows because we're getting really low. And then we're gonna deconstruct this wall and we're gonna go fight this guy out in the open field. And, Cause yeah, we can kite him now. He's way too wounded and we knocked him out. This dude's actually really good. He's too smart. It increases his learning rate, but increases his mental break as well. He's a quick sleeper though, so he needs less rest. And he's a jogger, so he moves quicker. I just don't know what we'd want him to do. Cause like, he has a vocal hatred for planting by the way. So if he sees squid planting, he's gonna harass him and that lowers squid's joy. And on second thought, he doesn't really have any traits that we need and squid's mood is in a really bad place i think we're just gonna let him die we got a couple other things we gotta prioritize like we got these gazelles that are almost gonna rot we need to butcher them up we're getting raided again and they're gonna attack immediately oh no by this dude who has an auto pistol this is bad for us oh we got a mad hair though that's good it's actually gonna hit this guy maybe Oh, knock his gun out. He's not using his gun anymore. It's in his inventory, but he's not using it. Okay, wait, that was huge. People are gonna say that's scripted. For some reason, I thought the raiders were gonna attack immediately, but they're not, and okay, now they're beginning their assault. Squid did have a bit of time to do some recreation and get a bit more rest in though. But yeah, I don't know what the chances of us getting that mad hair event. Oh, don't go for a stool. I mean, it's okay, he's being distracted, and we're hitting him a bunch. But like, that's just annoying. We're gonna have to make another stool. I don't know where he's going, by the way. He's trying to go down for this door down here. Okay, well, that's gonna give us a bit of time to just chill. Or we can actually just run him down and shoot at him because he's pretty low movement speed now. We've hit him a bunch. I don't know if we really care about not killing this kid. Like, we really want a researcher, and he's got none in intellectual. Even if we just end up knocking him out, like, I don't think we're gonna try to recruit him. And yeah, we killed him. Unfortunately, we can't use this heavier auto pistol because one of the parameters of the run is that we can only use tech that we've researched. One positive thing about that raider is, well, there is a dead hair over here, which is nice. We can butcher that up. But he did bring us some beer, and Squid has a chemical want right now. This beer will get rid of that, and it might actually give him a positive positive mood lit depending on okay it actually didn't get him up to a positive chemical threshold although he does have alcohol warmth now that's gonna give him plus 10 mood for five hours and only consuming one drink doesn't lower his manipulation by that much only two percent he's not a lightweight or anything if we do drink the other beer though i think that would boost his chemical meter up to a good place to where he'd be getting positive mood lits i will say that we should probably save it till we get some kind of really negative situation where his mood's really bad and the alcohol warmth could prevent us from going into mental breakdown but yeah squid's mood is in a really good place now and we're gonna have him start chopping down some trees we need wood for quite a few things actually. It's a few side projects around the base that we need to work on. We chopped down a few more trees and Squid ended up getting plants level 4, which is actually kind of big. He can now sow smoke leaf plants, which he can use to make smoke leaf joints and that can help his chemical meter. He also got to medical level 6, being that he's natural genius and he gets, it's like 4 XP every few seconds in the medical skill. But yeah, after chopping down all those trees, we got quite a bit of wood and we're gonna build, in addition to our base, or I guess Squid's gonna go cloud watch, which is fine. He's getting pretty bored of doing solid relaxation as well. We're gonna build him another recreation source in a minute. But yeah, we're gonna have him add onto this base where he got some embrasures out here just in case we get attacked from the east over here. And he botched one of the embrasures, which is something we did not want him to botch because that was a waste of eight wood, but oh well. But yeah, we got this room now walled off. We're gonna now begin the process of hauling all these chunks out of it. Yeah, he's hauling four at a time, which is really nice. This actually is not gonna take as long as I thought. That is thanks to the pickup and haul mod, which it says that mod's still not updated at 1.2, but it does work. It's one of those mods that like, if you don't have it, it's just so hard to play the game. because 
only haul one thing at a time, even if it's something that's not even that big. But yeah, we're gonna move our bed into this other room and there's still a lot of work to be done here. There's a lot of this blood from the mantids we killed earlier. And that, yeah, that's taking forever to clean up. We did eventually clean it all up though. We're next gonna move these urns inside. This bronze urn actually provides eight beauty. The sandstone one over here only gives six. Uh, bronze is a nicer material, I guess. And before we actually finish up this room, I just noticed Squid is now hungry and he's out of food. I believe we have enough wood to make a butcher table here. It's like a 15% chance actually now that he botches. Yes, okay, we didn't botch, thankfully. We're not gonna have him butcher up his hair for a bit more meat than we would have gotten if we just butchered it up at a crafting spot. And yeah, he's gonna eat that meat. And now we would like to have him rest. His bedroom is now somewhat impressive, by the way, which is crazy. I don't know why it's so impressive. But yeah, because the room's so nice, when he eats in it, he gets somewhat impressive dining room for plus four mood. And then when he sleeps in it as well, we'll actually build a roof area. We also had him chop down a few more trees and we're gonna have him make a game of your board, which again, we really hope he doesn't botch this. It takes a lot of work and 35 wood. And nice he didn't. Sleeping in the room though, did not give him a positive mood lit. I think it's because we left this door open. I held the door open while we were hauling all the chunks outside. And the stove over here conveniently bled out. We only hit it twice. It eventually bled out. Now he's going for a walk. Don't go for a walk. Play some game of year, dude. You just made this. There we go. He's playing game of year because we walled him in here. After playing game of year, he should have gotten somewhat impressive rec room. I'm not sure why he didn't get that. I guess the impressiveness is now mediocre because there's blood on the ground. Why is there blood on the ground, by the way? There should not be any blood on the ground anymore. And I'm not sure what happened. It says the room is only decent now. Wasn't it somewhat impressive at like 80 or something? Oh, it's because we had the door held open, I think. Oh, and we got a psychic suit, by the way. So I guess we don't have to worry about mood for a while. Not that we really had to worry about mood because yeah, he has a decent rec room now for plus two mood. I still I don't know why it's not somewhat impressive. Let's try to have this door held open though. Let's see what happens. It still says slightly impressive. I'm really not sure what's going on with that whole thing. Well, either way, our boy Squid's in a really good mood and we're gonna have him go chop down a forest, basically. There's a lot of things we still need wood for. And okay, we got a mad squirrel. That's not good. It's like just when things are going good, we have to get some negative event. Okay, thankfully we one shot it. The thing about squirrels, like they're actually pretty hard to hit because they're so tiny. So I was pretty lucky that we hit that shot. But yeah, after chopping down all those trees, we're gonna finish flooring in this base. And the room is now slightly impressive at 56. If we boost up to 65, we can get the room up to somewhat impressive and that would give him a pretty big mood boost. Cause yeah, we're getting plus two for a decent rec room and then plus three for a slightly impressive dining room. He should also be getting mood boost for having a slightly impressive bedroom as well. The door's not open anymore. And yeah, very nice. He gets plus three for having a slightly impressive bedroom. So yeah, his mood's in a really good place now. He could start getting some inspirations cause his mood's so high. We got an animal transport pod crash, by the way. It's a shock a goat ram. It's gonna bleed out in six hours. I'm pretty sure we saved this thing there's a chance it will join us i will say it's really far though like our base is all the way up here to the north and it is all the way down here it's got five hours left only and it got up oh no wait that's actually not that bad it should bleed out and go unconscious pretty soon here like it's got moderate blood loss we're just gonna come down here and start chopping some trees and wait for it to bleed out and then we'll save it i don't actually know if there's a higher chance that it will join us though anymore because it got up and there we go yeah it got knocked out again stabilize one of its injuries or maybe two Okay, it's got nine hours left. Let's rescue it now. I will say this thing only has a handling skill requirement of two, but there is a 5% chance that it revenges on tame fail, which is kind of high. I don't know if we want to tame it because squid has four animals. It's going to be like a pretty low chance that we tame it. In order to tame it up, we're going to need some berries. So we're going to chop down this berry berry bush for quite a few berries. Yeah, 34. This one was almost fully grown, 29 for that one. We could actually make some kibble out of it too. We need to kill some more animals though to do that. Like this Ebex ram wants to be made into kibble, I think, or a gazelle. I don't know why I called it ebex ram i mean they're kind of similar i guess let's butcher this guy up at our butcher spot for 33 meat and we're going to turn that into kibble 20 meat and 20 berries makes 50 kibble oh. And we're getting another hostile force coming in. And yeah, it's coming in from the road over here. This one's really weak though. It's only got 67 combat power. So I guess the dude like really sucks or something. I don't know. We're now going to do another project outside, which is we're going to wall off this butcher room and we're going to make another little bunker out of it. And we made a well here so we don't have to go all the way down to the lake to wash off. And Squid was trying to feed this thing kibble. Don't feed it right now. I mean, it doesn't even have malnutrition. Like, I don't know why I was trying to do that. We're going to not allow him to use the kibble. We need to save that kibble for when it wakes up and we can tame it. Oh, and the rescued animal joined us. That's awesome. Okay, this thing is actually going to be a good tank, I think. Shock goats are renowned for their capacity to store static electricity on their bony structures, and they release it as a defensive measure. It has characteristics common to many alien species, such as three pairs of eyes, but it also resembles a goat as it has horns. Shock goats are a crossbreed of two different creatures. I think it's a crossbreed of one of these mantids and a goat. 
And here comes the raid, by the way. And here's the dude, Walrus. He, like us, is chemical interest. He's got 11 planting as well, but we don't really care that much about planting. We mainly right now just need a researcher, and the dude cannot research. So, yeah, we're probably going to try to just kill him. And we missed our first shot. He's going to head down here to our bunker area, and we can test it out. See if we can get a shot off. And we did shoot... It was a weird attempt. What the heck is going on with this guy? Why is he hitting so quickly? It says he's doing 13.9 melee DPS and he's got negative... Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Is this some kind of bug with the mod or something? Like he already got this embrasure down to 61%. I think we're gonna have to wall it off. And by the way, I don't even think we can shoot at the guy right now because I think we're out of ammo. Yeah, what the heck is going on with that? He's just obliterating that thing. We are out of ammo though and we're gonna have to do something that kind of sucks, which is deconstruct this game board yeah okay what the heck just happened dude under the mod settings i unchecked using Geo's advanced combat animation because that thing just seemed weirdly overpowered it basically makes it so there's a random attack delay between attacks so i'm thinking that's why the dps was going all weird but i was noticing that his dps was significantly improved by like double or triple i think it was like 13 dps wasn't it at one point and so yeah we're not going to use that for now and deconstructing this is taking forever by the way yeah we're not gonna be able to deconstruct that which sucks we're gonna have to deconstruct something else like this door over here or something i can't believe i didn't have arrows for this fight this is so bad he's knocking down our bed oh that's not good i mean we have enough leather to make another one this is one of those things that like it will happen once oh crap he's killing our goat he destroyed its ear okay that's fine we are making ammo reload the bow now the dude is going to come back inside we can shoot at him while he's hitting our bed don't destroy our bed i mean it's awful we could make a better one for sure but a lunatic actually got up he's not in pain shock anymore oh okay the guy's coming back for us and he's setting our chessboard on fire. Very nice. Going for our pet now. And he knocked it out. It's got seven hours left. This is... Can we just get a freaking break here, dude? Like, can we just get some time so our pet can heal up? I don't feel like I'm asking for too much. And now Walrus is attacking our butcher table, which is not ideal. We're going to have Squid come in here and try to aggro him. Nice, we hit him. Oh, crap. He's destroying our butcher table. That's so much wood. Oh, my God. We just lost, like, 50 wood. And he's destroying our freaking primitive well, too. Okay, we hit him, though. I mean, it's fine, like, we'll survive, I guess, but it's just annoying. Because it's not easy to chop down these trees. Oh, he's going to kill our door, too. And no, he's not. He gave up on the door. He's really slow now, so I think we can just chase him outside. Do not kill the bed. Or the stool. Not the stool. Please just go down. Dude, we're hitting you. Okay, phew. He de off the stool. It was one hit away from getting destroyed. And we killed him. Holy. Let's haul this jerk out of here. And yeah, so our whole defense situation did not work out that well. And our shot goat lunatic did not help us there. But yeah, he's got a ton of blood loss still. We're going to banish him up and he's... Okay, we're getting another one. Can't we just get some time to chill, dude? I mean, it's like, yes, I do want to challenge, but not right now. I want to just chill right now. Oh, we got a wild man that wandered in. The dude actually has a burning passion for intellectual. He is sluggish though, which I guess it's not too bad. I thought it would lower his global work speed, but it just lowers his dodge chance. In order to tame him though, we need 12 in animals. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do with this guy. Oh, what the heck. This wild man's eating our freaking berries. 14 of them. No, we ate them all. You jerk. We're going to kill this thing. We can't tame him and we can't capture him, I don't think. Or actually, we can try to arrest him for a 34% chance, but we don't want to risk it. The dude's... Better than us in melee. Let's just put it that way. Not bandaging himself up. He doesn't care that we're attacking him though. There's, well, there's a 23% chance he manhunters actually. But yeah, he's trying to bandage himself and we're just wailing on him. And we knocked him out. And we'll try to rescue him. I'm not sure if we can even have him join us though. But yeah, we'll bandage him up. And if he doesn't join us, then we'll have to kill him. Oh, he joined us. He wants to name our faction. So Squid came up with a pretty intimidating name for our faction. We're not squidding around. And also this settlement's pretty intimidating as well, Squid Row. And we're now going to make our new addition, McKeever, a bed. And one thing I didn't notice about McKeever is he does have a weak constitution, which lowers his immunity gain speed. And so if he gets an infected or if he gets a disease, he'll probably die from it. Like, I don't think we're going to be able to save him. Negative 25% immunity gain speed's a ton. And so mainly we just got to get him out of this room for now. And nice, we didn't botch this bed. It's a poor one, which is better than his awful one that he was using we got another animal transport pod crash kiyoshi the muffalo we did save him and mckeever had a mental breakdown by the way he's gonna hide in his room for a while i guess because well for a lot of reasons we really need to get him some clothing but yeah we saved the muffalo and it might join us 
and KO Foxes wander in. What the heck is a KO Fox? It's apparently a former human. It only has a handling skill requirement of two, and there's no chance that it revenges on tame fail. Oh, and apparently it can actually do work. Not much though, it's incapable of doing a lot of stuff. It can do animal skill. It is a vocal hatred for animal skill though, so it's gonna harass other colonists that are doing animal skill. I mean, we could use it as like a tank, I guess, because it can do melee. This is weird. Squid's going down to recruit Karga, the former human, and he doesn't have any food. Recruit failed 24% chance, so that's really good. There's another one down here, by the way, Cobra, a former human, who is a KO Vix, apparently. It's not a KO Fox. It resembles a mix of a fox and a horse. This thing's freaking fast, though, by the way. It moves at 10 movement speed. Holy crap. And it actually can be used as a pack animal. Okay, we could use this for caravans. Let's try to team this guy, too. And he joined us. It's a person though. Like it's considered an extra colonist. So that means we're going to start getting raided by a lot more people. Because if you have less than three people, you get raided by less stuff. So yeah, I don't know if it's worth to recruit that guy. Cobra's freaking fast. So look at him move. Holy crap. He can do shooting, by the way. So we could have him be like the ultimate kiter guy. Oh, and the muffalo joined us. Holy crap, we got so many freaking animals now. Cobra, the former human, might not be worth because, yeah, she can't really do anything around base. That's all that useful. I mean, she does have six intellectual, so she can research, I guess. And so can McKeever. We should build them research benches ASAP. Oh, and here comes a raid. Mechanoids? Just one pod. It's a mecha droid, actually. And it's just one dude. Holy crap, this guy's nuts, though. And he's a Killian. Oh, no. So if things weren't already weird enough with the KO Foxes, things are about to get a bit more weird. Now, this mecha droid that dropped in does have a heroic trait. It's not a god trait, but it does give him quite a bit more armor. And I was thinking on this playthrough, I kind of want to nerf the heroic and god traits because the heroic and god traits just seem a little bit much. In the last series, I talked about how I nerfed them by increasing the market value of whoever has them. And if your market value is high, then you get by more people. For whatever reason though, the mod creator of this mecha droid mod made these droids have a market value of a dollar. And it's not like these things suck, like they're actually really solid. You do need power cells in order to power them up. So even if like for example we did somehow capture this guy and made him join us, he would run out of power and we wouldn't really be able to use him. That being said though, later on when we do have the tech to be able to recruit these guys, having these things around would be super OP because they're not going to increase our market value at all. And like I really do like the idea of the mod, there's three different mecha droids that have different stats. We got the Mecha Droid Alpha, which is like the basic Mecha Droid. It costs an AI Persona Core, and apparently you can get these now from shredding a Mechanoid or a Mecha Droid, which I think is really cool. It makes sense that there's some kind of controller in these Mechanoids or Mecha Droids that are making them move, and it is a low percent chance that you get an AI Persona Core. I think they made it like 7%. But yeah, you need an AI Persona Core, a good amount of steel, plasteel, Mechanoid parts, and eight advanced components for the basic one. I think this material list is actually decent. And then we got like the Mecha Droid Delta, which this is the guy that's raiding us. He has 40% more health than a normal colonist. Walks a bit slower, I believe. Normal colonists walk at like 4.6. He walks at 4. He also works 20% quicker than a normal colonist, and he has a bit more armor. 40% to most stuff, like gunshots and stuff like that. And a lot of protection against heat. Apparently, they cannot really burn that well. And then we got like the Mechadroid Gamma, which is better at learning, negotiation, trading, but he can't do mining and has less health. So I'm at kind of a crossroads right now. I'm going to try to contact the mod creator and try to negotiate with them a better price for these things or if I can figure out how to patch it myself I will do that. I do have a patch on my mod list for the Eurevian race and the Thrombonian race and this patch also affects the heroic and godly traits and I paid this guy 50 bucks to make it and he ended up blocking me which was weird and I gave him credit by the way I didn't even change the author until after he blocked me. He didn't even say anything either. Here was our last DM conversation he asked me to check out one of his mods and then I'm pretty sure this means he blocked me and yeah now the mod says it's created by Tyrion Plays which I was already thinking I was going to change the author anyways because I'm going to constantly be patching it to balance out the Revian and the Thrombonian races as well as the heroic and godly traits and I was going to add more things to it later on as well so I didn't feel like he should be the author and I was going to bring this up with him later and again he was still the author of the mod until he blocked me for I don't know what reason like I paid the guy 50 bucks for I think it was like 30 minutes of work I think that's definitely reasonable and he didn't seem to have a problem with the price he originally said he was going to do it for free and I was like no I'm going to pay you for your work but yeah so if anyone out there knows how to code there's a few more additions I want to make to this patch mainly adjusting the market value of a couple more races like I know pretty much how to do it I just don't know the exact defs I think they're called and I don't know how to look them up I'm gonna do a bit of research myself but mainly I just want to change the market value of these mecha droid alphas deltas and gammas and two more races and I'll pay whoever can help me with that just contact me on twitter I guess I'll just link my twitter also shout out to everyone who joined the council on patreon I'm gonna be doing a patron only vote and it's gonna be between Kenshi and Bannerlord also people that did join patreon can dm me on patreon or 
Discord and suggest names for our colonists, like McKeever is going to be re-nicknamed to Chaz as he's a researcher and the dude wanted a researcher named Chaz. I do apologize if this guy dies from an infection, by the way. I don't know if he's going to live that long and if he ends up dying, then I might rename another researcher to Chaz. But yeah, so we got this, I want to say kind of a raid boss mecha droid coming in with his 16 shooting. He's got a hand cannon with 18 shots and the dude is a Killian, which gives him 80% armor. Plus he's got like some flak pants, which give him a bunch of armor and he's got like a fleece shirt, some gloves and he's got 40% built in armor. So the dude is going to be really tanky. I don't even know if we're going to be able to take this guy down, but we're going to try it in the next episode. And that's assuming that I can fix this faction's market value. If not, I can just go into the game files and just delete the entire faction because yeah, I'm not going to have a faction that's running around with $1 market value. Like no. With that, I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.